Hello, David Paul here. Um, it's just a short a prelude to uh, making a, a video about the position of the foundations of the house. So this morning, what I did is I went up to Scotland, the top of the hill, and I um, we positioned all the um, the support beams, and I will do a video on that. It, I mean, one job was to getting them up there, and the other job was actually putting them in position. And that was both of them are monsters. These these beams are monsters. Um, but that's the end of them. And uh, I've come up with a, a new construction technique that will use shorter, slimmer pieces of wood. So we don't have to worry so much about that. But anyway, here are two people who helped me. Angmangamanga Gawako. Uh, my workers, uh, that guy in the foreground there, is um, that's Alan, uh, my ex-wife's cousin, Pinsan, and that's her sister there, Nida. And behind, just coming into view there, it's a guy called Uli, or Ugi. So these two guys, what they did this morning, they basically craned the stuff into position. They simply the case that I, I simply just don't have enough physical strength no man has it's not just me it's not having enough physical strength to lift those beams just on your own and I've always had a policy that you should be able to move things on your own so this is me going outside the policy just once because like these are important beams uh, we tried to put them on the side and they kept flipping over so I came up with a better idea which is to just lie the beams on the side so now the floor is springy so what I'm going to have to do is uh, I will have to double up the flooring to make it thicker well and or just put more supports in underneath so for example if I put one support in that divides the beam length that's half the length and the consequence of that is to multiply the stiffness by four so it becomes four times stiffer and of course because you've laid the beam on its side you've now doubled it so you've, you've gone four times and then times two uh, no hang on that's that's you've gone it's squared it sorry so it's now become eight times it, it's now become one eighth as stiff but twice as hard so it's one quarter as stiff um, the way I've put it but uh, I'll double it up and then return it to the same stiffness and and also yeah hang on the, because I've put the beam, put a support beam in underneath that now boosted back up and you end up being somewhere more stiff than where you started I'll explain this better when it's clear in my head when I'm actually at the job I'll make an immediate video to follow this so I'll call this point this phase um, part one laying the beams and the next bit um, is to uh, make the video on that I'm here in the front of the house sitting on the porch it's beautiful here but it, it's hot you got to keep adopting strategies to keep cool one of the great things that has just come about I didn't read I don't really rate these things much you know but um, there's this good device that repels mosquitoes and it also works on flies as well and uh, I got it here and um, it's smoking away there when we were working in the forest we had one of those and I lit it in the middle in the hope that it would help it not only did it help it cleared about it cleared everything from a radius of about 50 feet around so it's remarkable stuff so basically that means you'll be able to sit out on the porch in the evening at the house and not get bitten to hell because it's a pain in the neck having to cream up all the time I'm, I'm thinking about hanging one of them with a little insulator behind it round my neck when I'm walking around Davao I don't care I don't care what people think um, I won't be bitten to hell by skeeters and here's the reason why it's a big problem because on my legs I've got my legs bandaged up and I've got monster 
sores on my legs from mosquito bites. This is, I hurt myself with a log, I think it was in the UK, and scraped my shin, and that's never healed. And I've got this thing here, which is, you know, being a weeping sore, and it's finally dried up. God knows what's going on underneath this. If I took the bandages off, it's all a bit gross. But I'm slowly healing these things up. The, the strategy I'm kind of adopting is to get air at them without getting more flies on them. Because once you get an injury, you get a fly on, and then it's, you know, it's bringing in dirt and filth and stuff. Um, okay, so that's that. So another comment on something I'm doing. I have figured out a way of doing beams and roofs and all sorts of stuff if you've got the space, which we have the space, certainly on a roof. <coughs> you, you, you have like trusses and stuff, you know, a truss beam type of roof. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using 4x2s, the American framing system, 4x2 pieces of wood. And I've come up with a problem here because it's very difficult to get long pieces of straight wood. And also I'm running out of wood just for a mundane purpose of the support of the house. Not for the pretty stuff, you know. And I want to keep the pretty stuff, the pretty wood, for the pretty jobs like furniture. And the remainder of that tree that Pa gave us. So what I have here in my hand is, this is a piece of cocoa lumber. Which is crap. It's like really... The lowest of the low in terms of lumber, but it'll do the job. It will do the job. But somebody described it as like steel wires mixed in with foam, you know. It's quite soft and hard, both at the same time. And the problem is, is the soft bits is where the critters start to want to feed on it and so on. The rot gets in. And also, it's it has a... An indeterminate structure, so it's best to use the fattest pieces which have a continuous grain running down them. Otherwise, if you use small bits, you're going to end up with something like MDF, which you don't want. So use the longest pieces with long threads in them somewhere, at least there's some of them you're going to guarantee running through. Okay. <clears throat> the coconut, the coconut tree, the best part is around the circumference of the tree. So the middle part is which is about half of the well half of the width of the internal is just rubbish. That's just throw it away. So you cut it in an X form, and then you've got this bit here and this bit here and this bit here, which are usable. Then you've got to square that up so you've got to flatten the edge. Then you've got to take the edges off. And you can imagine that by the time you finish, you, you're only going to get about a quarter of the actual wood out of this tree that was in it. <clears throat> but here's the good thing, it's abundantly available. And often it's left, left sown down and left to rot. So here we are. We've got it. So the thing is, the key thing about this is it's pang it, it's ugly. It's got no character whatsoever. And it's quite obviously a bunch of straws, like a bunch of strands in the wood. So when you cut through them, you've got these, like, fleck-like structure. It just doesn't have a beautiful figure to it at all. So what are we to do with this, you know? Well, I wanted to buy some Kedah red wood dye. <coughs> and I, man, I've tried everywhere to get that damn stuff. It's the number one ace stuff. So this here is a varnish that you can buy in the Philippines. It's a polythene, they call it plastic varnish. It's just polyurethane. But it has a very unnatural look to it. Uh, and I'm not happy with it. Though it would help in stopping borers because it's a finish. Um, so what now? Well, in the UK, I purchased some red hair dye. And I, w I didn't bring the ammonia with it. The, the ammonia is a setting agent that goes with it. To be honest, I think basically what happens is it sets due to being oxidized. 
because when I mixed this up, it was just like, well, it was just like creamy coloured white, nothing, nothing to it, you know. And uh, what's happened over time is the oxygen's got at it and, and turned it red. So it would seem to me that it, you put it on and it will actually turn red. Okay, so here we go. We managed to get it here to the Philippines and um, now we can use it and we can just wait for it to develop. So what I've done here is I've put it on the wood and it seems to me, I don't know, but it seems to me that I've created something which looks a lot more interesting. So if I just do the cocoa lumber with this, I'll have something half respectable. I'm, I, I'm not, we will see how it goes, you know, but I'm not, I, I'm never impressed with Coco Lumba. I've tried my best to uh, use this stuff, but it's, if, if you can avoid it, it's best avoided. Um, so that's that. So that I, I'm going to have to start using some of this because I've got un, abundant supplies of, of old coconut trees on uh, Scotland and all the other pieces of land of the rest of the family which I can just cut down. They cost me 300 pesos each which is about just four pound for an entire tree. That's a lot of lumber for four quid. I can see a man coming to the door and I think this is a bill. And buy that sarkin? And Ian? No. No? That's good. That's good. It's not a bill for me. <laughs> so there you go. So, so far, so good. We see how that develops. And uh, next, I will make a video of the, to join with this one, of the actual laying of the, of the beams. And, um, and how we had to work around the job before somebody got killed. See you later. Makita tayo sakana, atilago. See you later. Jesus be with you.